Right, today we have this uh, it's about 36 and a half, 37 inch Sony soundbar. As you can see there, I paid eight pounds for it. And the model number, if I can get it in view, is the SACT60BT. Now when we plug this in, it's absolutely dead. I can't find any hidden power switches or anything else on here. So let's take it apart and see what's wrong with it. Right, so just to show you there's nothing happening on here. This is my plug that I use for everything. It did come with one. I thought I'd try another one. Make sure it doesn't work. Uh, I presume we should have some lights along up here somewhere because it does sit down that way. So I presume you've got surround, optical, coaxial, analog, Bluetooth. Um, soundbar I have usually has lights up here. You can feel something under the cover. But yeah, it's nothing. There is nothing there. No pops when you plug it in to say there's any sound or anything like that. So let's strip this down. See what's wrong with it. So I just got a ton of... Uh, Phillips screws to undo it at the back. Can't get this all in shot at the same time. That one doesn't even fit down there. to get this from the tip shop and you get a receipt with them and if they don't work you can't take them back so we can't take this back after we can't get it to work <laughs> if we can't fix it we can't take it back so we paid eight pound for this and i think when i quickly checked online there was Around 40 quid with just uh, this bar on its own. They do come with um, subwoofers as well, which wasn't there. But I think if you've got the subwoofer as well, you can uh, get about £65 for them. All at the same length of screws, which is nice. Well, I'll just double check we've got them all. Yep, 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 yep. And now, see if we can prise this apart. What are the feet? Let's take the feet off just in case they're holding on anything. Looks like the front should just pull away, I'm hoping. Checking inside for any wires getting in the way, but nope. And we've got a little wire there, which is going to our NFC connection on the side, which is a little module there. And you've got a little symbol there for your NFC, so you can tap your phone against it and connect it out straight away. All right, so here we have our power module all in here. I'm not sure whether that cap looks like it's bulging. If that cap is bulging, that could be the problem straight away. I think I'm going to need to pull this board out though, just to have a better and closer look at it. So 
Yeah, so we do have our LED lights up the top. Disconnect those LEDs for the moment. Should just slide out of there the ribbon cable, and it does. Just got some more speaker cables down this side, just pop them out. Be careful what you're touching here because these capacitors could still be charged. And that one looks like it's domed there. And that could be one that's gone. So that's that out of the way. Another speakers, the other speakers, the other side are plugged in down the bottom. It's possible to get your fingers in there. And what else we got hanging on here? is a ground that's going up to the board for the LED lights. So let me just take that screw out there so we don't lose it. These screws are different sizes than those ones, so we're going to keep these to the side for the inside part. Right, and now we have our board that we can test. So let's zoom you into this capacitor that I think is blown on its way out. Yeah, the one we're looking at is this one here. I'm not sure whether you're going to see on the camera, but it looks like it's domed a bit to me. This one in here is, it's like the top is pushing out, which is usually an indication that it has blown. And uh, the big one this side, that looks okay. Don't think that one's domed much. Right, let's see if we can get this one back in there. See, that one is sticking up a little bit. So that will be one to probably take off first and test. take the shield off the back of this and we'll test to see if there's any voltage left in our capacitors. Now can we take it off? So slide it up past that. And is it going to slide down this way? Mm. 
Yeah, now you want to be careful because you're exposing the back of like these capacitors here. This one is how many volts does that say? That is 400 volts. So that one has a potential of being 400 volts. Probably not, but it's still probably going to be 300. So you want to make sure this one is discharged. So you can see the big line on the side, that's the minus. Be careful, you don't want to be putting your fingers anywhere over the back here, that's why I'm holding it by the edge. So we've got the minus on this side, so let's flip this over. So that capacitor is probably in there, is that the capacitor? Hard to see where the legs are on it. So that's those four. So I think it's these two across here. So I think look about that capacitor as these two pins. Uh, there and that. Look count the voltage and put out multimeter on DC. Where can you see it? There you go. So remember our minus is on the opposite side. So our minus was down here. Our plus was up this side. So you can see there's only a 0.24 of a volt left in that capacitor. That is definitely that is definitely that capacitor. And these other ones down here, these little ones are 35 volts, so not too bad. They're still going to give you a little shock. Just going to put my funky glasses on. Zoom in. Just going to see where these caps are. Right, so we've got the minuses over this side. Just going to. Where was I? So just going to check these capacitors, make sure there's no juice in them. Yep, nothing in there. This is the one I think is blown. 1.4, that's millivolts, that's not even volts. It's now all absolutely dead as a dodo. So I'm just going to try a capacitance, um, a capacitance, capacitance test, that's it, capacitance test. So we go out capacitance reading, uh, best to do this out the board, but I'm going to do it in the board. But you don't always get a true reading. So let's make sure we're just getting on those two pins only. 910. About 910 microfarads. Obviously, it's going down. Let's check the one above it. See what that's reading. 876. Eight seventy as well, so the capacitance reads is not too bad. And that one's eight seventy. So that's literally all these I've just measured down here. And they were saying eight seventy, this is meant to be four seventy microfarads. Which it definitely isn't. So I'm just going to pop this one out the board and see what that measures on its own. So let's get the soldering iron warmed up, pop it out, see what it reads out the board. 
Right, so I've just zoomed in so we can see what we're doing here. Just going to put some leaded solder on here. Just make it easier to come off. That's my solder sucker. I'll put my solder sucker away. Now we should just be able to heat these up and suck some of this solder out. Come on, melt now. Well, go. Right, now if we give this a little pull from the other side, if I can get my hands on it. He doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to come out. Oh, not that close. Not wanting to come out of there. Let's remove some of this goo. Because that's not probably helping it come out. Don't want to leave that goo in there. Get our fingers on it again. Well, it's moving a bit. One side is loose and moving, and the other side is out. Ta-da! It's out. Right. Just going to turn my iron again quickly, just because I'm going to turn it off for a minute, because I probably haven't got any capacitors if this one needs replacing anyway. So got a 35 volt capacitor 470 microfarads you've got your minus side marked if you had if you bought a brand new one of these the minus side is the shorter side one size longer than the other I'll check in a bit so multimeter on to capacitance reading See the microfarad sign. 
So, try and do this so you can see. So that is our minor side. Actually, what you should do first is we know these um, hasn't got any voltage in it, but totally discharge it just by putting something metal across. It could be that. Could use a screwdriver. Needs a split second that will completely discharge a capacitor. I wouldn't do it one that's fully charged up because you're. Uh, it's not a very good idea. Minus prong, negative prong on a negative terminal, and this is going to move around. So I'm trying to show you on camera. Do it this way, so I can hold it. So minus on there, positive on there, and let's see what reading it's going to give us. 430 microfarads. So there's nothing wrong with that capacitor. <laughs> According to my meter, even though it has got a bulge in the top. That is a definite little bulge in that. That doesn't show it up on camera that well. But it is definitely bulging on top. So that capacitor is actually reading fine. We are going to change it anyway. Just want to read these other ones again in, in the board. Five hundred fifty-two. See, they're all um, let's call it all in parallel, all in series. One of the two. And now I'm going to read differently, aren't they? Oh, that's the same, that's still around 870, so... Maybe it's these two that are uh, in a series, because that is now lower than what it was saying before. But we have got an area here that's looking <coughs> poop. It's all looking a little bit burnt up. So let's just take a few ohm readings across these resistors and stuff. Reading about nine kilo ohms. She's got a 103 on there. She's got 154 written on it, and it is one six sixteen point one kilo ohms. Kilo ohms. Do, 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 do. This one has 103 on it as well. Read 9.2 kilo ohms. Is that 104? Just reading 83 kilo ohms. Hmm. In this 472, 4.68. So that's pretty much right. So is this one, is that 104 on there? Which is reading 83. It says 104. Alright, let me do a few more bits of testing around this area. I shall go back to you. Right, I've just come around a bit and 
uh, clean this up with some IPA that I've got the isopropyl alcohol. I've uh, just cleaned some of up. Looks looks okay. I can't really see anything else wrong with it. Um, I did do a Google search and look for the schematics for this. Um, so I just typed in the board number that's on here and it did come up saying about how not the capacitor I've taken off but this capacitor in here which is the C914 I think it was there's my glasses yeah the capacitor down here that's got this goo on it the C is a C914 on the board uh, that is a 16 volt uh, 470 microfarad capacitor. Uh, it seems like there is a problem with that one. That one bulges. But on our one, that one isn't bulging. We've had that one bulging. So that seems like a problem because just from doing a Google search for the board number and looking for schematics, it's come up with that on quite a few places to change it. Um, so, what I'm going to do. Uh, the old guy that used to live in the house we bought was a collector of all old electrical parts and I've got some old capacitors here. Um, so I've found one to replace the one we've taken out which was a 35 volts 470 microfarad. So here this one's slightly larger but it's exactly the same. Again it's a 35 volts. Focus on my bad fingernails. Uh, that is a 35 volt 470 microfarad and also you need to make sure on these ones about the temperature as well these are a higher temperature rating 105 degrees which is the same as this one on here 105 degrees it's um they're a higher operating temperature which is what you need most of the time when you're in the on the power supply board um, so we're just going to replace this capacitor and just see if there's any difference. So the minus was on our left side. And it's usually indicated on the board. You'll either get the minus or you know you get some cross hatchings like that. That is your minus side. So we're just going to squeeze that through there. Right, so that's through the other side. Hopefully that's not going to fall out. Let's zoom you in. Oh, where are we? Ah, where's my finger there? Right, so that's it there. These two pins. Oh, so take the old solder off our solder iron. Right, let's check it's hot enough. Yep, plenty hot. So always heat up the pin. Let the solder mount onto there. Again, we're going to heat up the pin. Clean that off. Now well, that is touching that capacitor. Uh, not the capacitor, the resistor. There is a... There is a bridge between that and the capacitor, so I'm just going to remove that. Well, that probably doesn't matter it probably is connected to that anyway but just to make sure 
So I'm just going to have a look under this one to see if that matters whether that's touching or not. Whether that solder joint is touching on there. Just want to try and remove that join. That bridge. Right, so let's connect this back up and we'll see if anything has changed. So let's just put the shield back on the bottom of here. Right, all I might do for now is hook in this ground pin and hook in the um, LED lights. So we're not worried about connecting up these speakers or anything else at the moment. this one over here that could be the Bluetooth not sure yet so I'm just going to put the LED ribbon back in just be careful when you slide this back in Take it easy. So that's in there. We'll put this other ground pin in because it's applying the ground to the board of the LEDs. So that was down in there, wasn't it? See, I had this slightly out the board when I did this. Or the board slightly out when I undid that one. I'll make sure that's nice and tight because it is supplying the ground to here. So you want to make sure that's nice and tight. Right, so let's get our power lead, which isn't plugged in yet. Make sure no wires are touching places they shouldn't do. Right, so we're going to put our power in, and we're not powered up yet. This plug switch isn't on. But let's see if we get any lights. Let's move it in frame a bit better. Right, so what we're going to look here, look up here for is any lights coming on when we power this up. So, switch it on. And we still have a nothing. Don't put your hands anywhere near that, it's all going to be live. This side especially, this is a high voltage, this is a lower voltage side, but that's high voltage, don't go anywhere near that. So, definitely got nothing lighting up still. So, power off. Don't touch anything in there. And let's unplug it all.
So it's obviously just not the capacitor, because even though this whole capacitor was reading the right microfarad, it is bulged on the top, so there's definitely something wrong with it, so it needs changing anyway. And I'm just going to check the voltage on this capacitor here that I can see, that I can get my leads to, just to make sure it's discharged. Yeah, there's one millivolt in that capacitor there. Right, so now I might scrape some of this gunk off of here and just check this um, capacitor. It's 470 microfarads, which is the one on this side. So let's have a see if we can read it in circuit, but you you never really get um, never really get a true reading of capacitors in circuit. The minus side is that side. Actually, let's bring this in again. It's not going to read it properly. So this is the one when I looked up. This is one they said causes the problems. See that display is jumping between millions and what is it, nanofarads and microfarads? What is it? We've got microfarads, nanofarads, and then millions of farads. 1.493. See, that doesn't read right, but then they never do. So Let's remove some of this crud that's all over here, some of this glue they put on there, and we'll pop this capacitor out of the board and read it out of the board, seeing as that one is the one they say causes the trouble. God knows why they put this stuff on it. Obviously be careful because you don't want to be putting your screwdriver through a capacitor. I'm not sure what L901 is. Let's get this uh, C914 out just to just to check it. Oh, let's get our solder sucker on here again. So we're going to put some, uh, get some solder on this. Makes it a little bit easier to mount if you put some lead leaded solder on there. Lead free solder has a higher mounting point. Are you going to melt for me today? Do the same with this one.
go. It's just falling out. <sighs> there it is, just falling out the bottom. So let's see what breeding we got on here now. So we're back on our capacitance. So this one is 16 volts, 470 microfarads. So we're just going to short that one out. So it's still quite warm. Four hundred and fifty five. So it's close. I mean they're allowed to be within sort of uh ten, fifteen percent some of them. Let's see if I've got one similar to that in a little jar of goodies. One moment. Oh, so I have found a 25 volt 470 microfarad. Uh, it doesn't matter about the voltage as long as the voltage is higher. You need to make sure the microfarads are the same and if you're going to change the voltage make sure it's a little bit higher. So we're just going to test this one with our meter. Short it out, all those these have been in a jar for god knows how long. Get on there. Oh, come on. So that's is that reading properly on I losing grip? There we go, that's 490 microfarads. So that's a little bit higher, which is okay. I'm going to try putting this one in and see if this makes any difference. So make sure we get the minus on the minus side. Again. Just lining the holes up, squeezing it in there. Make sure that's sticking through enough, which it is. Just try and tack that in a bit. Put a tiny bit of solder on there just to hold it. Right, now we do it properly. So we do this leg. And this leg. Right, we've just put the bottom plate back on. So we're just going to put our LED lights in. Don't put them in at an angle. Gentle wiggle. Let's put this ground screw in. Make sure the back of this isn't touching anything, it is hovered away. Right now, our power cable is turned off still. So now we're going to flick the switch, see if we get any lights. Still dead. Right, so I've just decided to put this all back into the board and connect these wires up. Because um, we've got the Bluetooth board over this side, which is this one here. 
Um, and obviously we're not going to get lights on if it's the Bluetooth isn't connected up. So I've just put it all back in, connected it all back up, just to see if we get anything different on here. So I can't see anything else wrong with this board, uh, apart from obviously those capacitors, and I've changed the one that they say goes 40 anyway. So let's keep our hands away from the back of this board while we just plug this in over here. Although it's not turned on yet. So right now, let's turn it on. See if we get anything different. And also, I forgot about that I have the remote. Bit of a schoolboy error. Now there's no controls on here. There's no hidden buttons or <coughs> touch buttons or anything. Um, but I went to try the remote <coughs> to turn it on and I got nothing but then I decided to check whether the buttons actually work um, it won't work on this camera it does work on some cameras like your phone so if you get your phone camera up and put your remote under the lens and press the button not sure, let me turn this light off on that You should see. Don't take photos. Ugh. Right. I'm not sure if you can see that. There is a purple light shining out there. There you go, when you press a button you can see a purple light. That's how you can test that remotes are working properly. So there you go, so now we've got the power button working, I think. There we go. See it better now. Right, but for some reason, yeah, it won't show up on this camera. It'll show up on the phone camera. And as you can see, <laughs> it's now turned on. The infrared is at the front, it is just down inside there. About there it is. So now it's not turning off. There you go. So now the light's turned off. So this is now working. Press the power button, Bluetooth light is back on. Right, so now if we we're not going to see this, we're going to scan for this on the phone. Uh, we'll probably have to use the pairing button on the remote to get it in the pair mode. At the moment it's slowly flashing. Oh, wrong button. So press the pairing button, it's now flashing faster. So if we scan again, we should see devices come up down the bottom of here. There it is, the Sony HTCT60BT. So we're just going to pair with that. It says it's pairing. And now we are connected there for audio. Right, so let's just open up our Spotify. Right, let's just play a random song on here. That's it, this is not playing out on my phone.
see up here that the audio output is the Sony There we go, that is playing. We've got it working. Um, whether, it, whether it was just the remote, I don't know. But it was definitely the capacitors. I mean, that capacitor was bulging, so if anything, that capacitor was going to fail very soon. And it would have been dead if it wasn't making it dead already. Uh, but that's it. Like in my last video, like in the video I did previously of the Sony VHS, it was just a, a blown capacitor. And again, it looks like this was just a capacitor problem. So we changed the one that was bulging. And also, while I was searching um, a schematic for the board, I saw that this other capacitor, the C914, is a common problem. So we switched that one out and changed that for a newer one as well, although it was higher voltage. As long as it's higher voltage, it's the same microfarad, which is OK, as long as your, your voltage is the same or higher just make sure the microphone is the same. So let's quickly just put this all back together now. We'll put all the screws in. Let's just turn it off. Off. Turn the power off. All right, let's pull the power lead out. Screw this back together properly and then I'll show you it when it's all put back together. All right, it's all back together now. Let's just plug it in again. Put our feet back on. We can remove our eight pound sticker now. We're not taking it back. It's working a butte. Power it up. Use our remote to turn it on. Let's turn the light down so you can see it. Turn it on. This button still is a bit funky. I might pull it apart. I might give take this apart and give it another little clean. But there you go. You can see that blue light's come on there now. That's it. Working. volume buttons on here, turn it down. See they're all working. Got our bass adjust as well and our treble adjust on there. Think they're all working. All the other lights are working. You can see you've hit the maximum treble. There you go, that's fixed. So we paid eight pounds for it. We've probably spent a couple of hours on it. A couple of capacitors, even if we had to buy them new, they would have only cost you your pennies really. Um, so hopefully one, some of these have sold with the subwoofer as well for 80 pounds, but there's also one of these that's sold on its own for 45 with free shipping. So we're gonna stick this up for 40 quid. Uh, we might add a little bit of shipping on top of that. Uh, but we'll send it UPS, so it's only going to cost us probably £5.50 to ship anyway. Uh, but that's it. That was well worth it. Got it all working. Another little fix and hopefully another good sale and profit. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.